Bird Feed! Alright guys, welcome back to Bird Feed. Uh, Michael. Timothy. Doing a little sports discussion right now. Have a little debate for the uh, NBA MVP. Uh, regular season MVP, I should say. Yeah. Um, as of right now, I think we both have our choices. Uh, the top three that was uh, nominated is going to be Russell Westbrook, James Harden, and Kawhi Leonard. Um, fourth, I would assume, would have been LeBron James, so we'll probably get into that a little bit. Um, so Isaiah was probably, he's probably going to end up being like voted fifth, I'm guessing. Most likely. Somewhere probably. in there. Um, so what do, you, what do you think of the top three? Uh, top three, I probably, I, it's almost hard not to have LeBron James in it, but just in the seasons that those three guys had, mm -hmm. it's kind of hard not to have them as your top three. Mm -hmm. Or put it, I will, I will say for sure, out of two, James Harden, Russell Westbrook, mm -hmm. you you cannot not have them in it. Yeah. Almost would seem like you don't. If you wanted to add a third, you could, but it's not necessarily necessary because he's not going to win it. Yeah, I just don't see the third between those two. Yeah, um, you could also still make a. Um, a dispute uh, for Kawhi Leonard because he did have an all-time great season for himself, and he's yeah. an all-around player. And the thing is right now on sports shows is he's the best all-around player in the league. Is he the best jump shooter? No. Is he the best defender? Yes. But that, that's where the whole MVP discussion gets weird um, because I don't think MVP really represents most valuable player. You're like It's always like the guy who has that land, season. landmark season. Yeah. yeah like, <clears throat> Russell Westbrook really established himself as a force this year because he was the only guy on that team. And he, I mean, he is the most valuable player on that team, but would you say he had a better all around season than a LeBron James or a Kawhi Leonard who they dominated their respective conferences because yeah. of those guys? And that's true. And see, for me, I'm assuming that's your guy, Russell Westbrook. Russell Westbrook. And see, mine is James Harden. I look at it, the, the knock that I have against Russell is when I watched the Thunder play, especially middle midway through the season, was. They're giving him the triple double. Not yeah. like you can't like you can't just get a. He still has to go out there and play. Yeah. But his team is giving them the triple double. I'm looking at uh, Ernest Cantor, uh, bloody rebounds. And it's like head. literally like you're like seven foot. Why are you not snagging that rebound? Mm -hmm. Him as a guard, either running down the court or really making the outlet. Like you're literally just letting him take the ball up from court from goal to goal. Like for what? Like yeah. let's let's make some basketball plays. There was one where. I forgot who they were playing, but it was near the end of the game, and uh, Oladipo had a fast break. Mm -hmm. He literally, because um, he didn't have a Russell to have a great scoring game, so he decided to dish it off instead of just going for the dunk. Then he passed it back. No, I want to get to get this triple double here. So here's the assist anyway. They literally, I remember that play. I do remember fought that back and forth. Who's going to get the assist? Like, no, you shoot it. You shoot what? it. You shoot it. Just take the damn <laughs> shot. I mean, again, because it's a team that's good for him. I, I the team wanted him to get, but it's like. But that's not in the rules of just playing basketball. Just literally just play in the flow of the game. If he gets a triple-double, he gets a triple-double, not force it. They were forcing him to get triple-doubles after yeah. through the season. Now, they did but win it, almost 90% of those games. They but, did. but he also, went to get to that point, he had to kind of establish himself as that triple-double machine before we start having the issue of, like, are they letting him get these triple-doubles? Are they forcing this? Mm -hmm. We had to go through the first, like, that amazing 30-game stretch at the beginning of the year where, like, he was just on fire. You yeah. Know? He was putting up 40 points seemingly, like, every other night. <laughs> you know, my, like, my whole thing is now is because he set mm -hmm. this president where he pretty much is either every other game or every two games is – He's gonna get a triple double. I want to see this next year. Yeah, I don't want to see a fall off. He got what forty triple doubles, forty one triple doubles, forty two. Yeah, I want to see him as a record. At least, at least twenty five. Yeah, I, I think I think twenty five is a good number because I don't like that of him forcing the triple double now because it's like this game is about winning. It's not about your fucking your stat line. Obviously, I don't think they're gonna add a big dimension to that team going forward where he's not gonna be relied upon, but. The triple double is not the important thing. The, the important thing is you guys need to be a force in the West, which yeah. apparently they're not. Like, they need somebody. They do. And, they and for do. me, if I look at my MVP is James Harden. Mm -hmm. I look at how he how the offense was constructed with uh, a new coach and Michael D'Antoni, um, just pure just running gun. And then the players around them are not great players, but they're role players and they fit well in the system. So people will say, well, he had a better team than uh, Hart um, and Westbrook. And Westbrook did. Well, yeah, he did. He had a better system, I would say, too. But right? if you look at what James Harden did, as in he, he broke records too, offensively just with points, assists, and I think rebound just as an offensive player. Like how, He was a scoring machine. Yeah, for sure. And he, he made, just like you would say, take Harden, uh, not Harden, but uh, Westbrook off 
their team and their god abysmal, who's going to be the guy that's going to make that? Eric Gordon on the Rockets? Probably not. Yeah. We got they're, Lou. they're 15 wins less at least. Yeah. And they had, that's probably one of their best seasons since probably the 90s when they won the uh, championship. My, <clears throat> my only detraction from James Harden, the reason why I'm not picking him, is because when I watch him, I, I don't want to say he gets cheap points, but like he is kind of that... Is it, is it those uh those foul points pretty the much? Foul points. The euro step and yeah, he's a guaranteed the, foul every time. Yeah, and it, like he's athletic and, and he he's a he's a very athletic guy, obviously, but he's not it's nowhere near I know he's not on Westbrook or Westbrook or J, or Kawhi Leonard or LeBron James. Like I don't put him on that level. Like But do you what but for him though, his it he plays to those rules. Those rules literally yep, were meant for him. Place. And he's a smart player. Yeah, he's a very they smart literally player. are oh, these are Harden's rules pretty much. That's he yeah. takes advantage of it, so you can't not. I, I mean, it, it can be enough, but it's like, well, he's smart enough to get. If you yeah. want to keep doing it, then stop following him, I guess, or yeah. close up, clog up the lane where he has no other choice to do it, something. Then, else. then those are the only points he gets. He's yeah. a, he's a great pure shooter. He's a good ball handler. He's not like he doesn't get those like amazing drive through lane points as much mm-hmm. as I like to see him do, but. I, he's my, counting on the foul. Yeah, I just think his game is kind of it's it's too finesse for my taste. Okay. Like it's it's not aggressive enough, especially on the defensive end. Like I hate watching <laughs> him play defense. Yeah, he's pretty bad. Oh, it's ridiculous. And and, and when I look at because I go Westbrook is he makes boneheaded plays. He does. He steals the ball, but he gets the ball stolen from yeah. him all the time. And he, the perfect he takes game, game I too. think was Game Three against the Rockets in the playoffs where they had the lead. And everybody's like, okay, where they complain that he um, when he when he went out the bench when he went to the bench for like a couple minutes, the team sucked. They did suck. However, yeah. they still had a lead when he came back. And I think yeah. it was five points. True. Fact. He came back and the rest of the team took one shot for the remaining fourth quarter. For it was like eight minutes. They took he one shot. He forced so much. Dude. And I'm like, this is your MVP. Your MVP can't trust his team. He's supposed to be the you're the most valuable player, but he, let's be honest, he's not the great, greatest jump shooter in the no, world either. He's, he's not. average at best. But we, we always run into this, though. Like, the guy, these guys who are, you know, scoring machines, like, they, we always kind of go back to, like, the Kobe rule. It's like, the guy who's, like, his ego is almost more important than the team. Like, he, he'd rather just try to take the game over, even if he's having a bad game. Like, he, he will not He stop. will just force it. And like, well, you force yourself into a loss. They probably could have at least had one win in that series, and they end up getting swept. Have you ever seen the movie uh, Tin Cup? It's like an old Kevin Costner movie where he's a golfer. I don't think so. You know. Right. Well, there's a scene at the end of the movie where, like, uh, it's his big return to golf or whatever, and he, he tees up a ball, and he, like, he's trying to get, get the ball into the screen that's sitting in the middle of a pond, and he keeps missing it, so he just keeps putting the ball down in the same spot and hitting it over and over again. And it's just, like, it's on national television. Everybody's like, you look like a moron right now. Like, that's how I feel every time I watch Russell Westbrook in the fourth quarter when he's just choking bad. It's like, oh, my God, just stop. Yeah. Stop. Like, he's so talented and stuff, but it's like, you got to you gotta get your guys in the flow of the game at some point. Yeah. It's a team sport. What, like, because he – because that is – let's be honest, that is his Achilles heel. He's still a good player. He's an elite player, but he's not always – because it, you can – Look at it and say, "Well, he tires himself out too because yeah. he's going 100 miles per hour the entire game." Well, he looks spent. Yeah. Who do who who does he believe in to at least help him out? He doesn't have belief in anybody. And you look at some games last year and the year before with Durant, he still felt like I can still do this even with Durant because some people the argument was, "Well, Durant left because of Westbrook." Mm-hmm. But if you look at look at the uh, conference finals where they were play, they pretty much were playing back and forth. Huh, you got the ball, you got I'm gonna take this shot, Michael. Mm-hmm. It's your shot next next time we got the ball. But it's like if somebody's in the flow, why are you going yep. away from that? And Durant, I think I believe the game, the time, of the game. He had the flow going, and next thing you know, Westbrook just wanted for whatever reason. Mm-hmm. Maybe it wasn't intentional that he went, but he just he he literally kills your momentum. I, I doubt we'll ever see Russell Westbrook break away from that style of play. That's the problem with him. And that's why I again I have an issue with the whole idea of the MVP because I'd much rather give it to a guy like Kawhi Leonard. A guy like LeBron James, a guy like Isaiah Thomas, like even Isaiah Thomas. That actually means that it was the, they the, they get their team involved, and they like once the flow is established. Like I can say what I want about my detractions from LeBron James. Like if he's if his guys are flowing, he lets them play, mm-hmm. and that's awesome. Like yeah, he's, he's not gonna literally just take over when him taking over is him. It's like my team oh, is shit. completely <laughs> sucks. Yeah, exactly. I have no other choice. Not I just want to try to get eighty points in the game. Exactly. Which I, to be honest with you, I could see Russell Westbrook one day literally trying to go not 
go after that record, but like no shot attempts in a game. Mm -hmm. Just totally what Kobe that. Bryant had sixty last year, I believe. Yeah, <laughs> I think or some ridiculous number. I can literally see him going like 60, 70 shots, something and, like that. Yeah, and, and like he just won't stop. Like you're not that guy, unfortunately. You're good. You're elite, but you're you know stay within your realm. And yeah. the one like I look at wrong. NBA and the NFL when I go like MVP. It's there's a fan, there's like a popularity into it too, but a lot of times with the NFL, they get it right when it's literally you can put that person on any team in the league, and if if they put up those numbers on that season, and then you take them off with, they wouldn't be nowhere near as successful. NBA is like, eh, sometimes you can get them that way, but. It's more of well, who had the best stats this year? Yeah, or that's it all you, you're just looking at best stats. You're not looking at what made did was the team successful? Why they was doing it? I mean, of course you can say for the Thunder they were, but to a certain extent. Yeah, yeah, they could have won a few more games without him forcing triple doubles too. And that, and that's where I'm coming from. Like from the way I see the way they vote for the the MVP, like the way the NBA does it, I think Russell Westbrook, in my opinion, should be the clear winner just because okay. we he did something we've never seen before. Because if stats are these glory numbers, like we've never seen someone average a triple double. That's not happened in our lifetimes. No. I mean, even if like you said, some of it was kind of force fed, like it was still impressive. And some of those games, like if you tuned if you tuned in and watched the Thunder game, like yeah, he did some mind blowing stuff. But then he also had these games where you're like, what the hell are you doing? Just stop. Like, knock it off. Mm. But, but James Harden also, he had a lot of very impressive games. And when he started raining threes and stuff, that was crazy to watch. I, I just think that it, it also, it did, it matters inside, well, like, what is the team aspect of it when you're putting up these numbers? Are these, like, dominant wins by the team? Or are you, is it solely just, like, I look at his triple-doubles versus Harden, um, and I look at, some of the uh, James Harden triple doubles were like 15 points, a couple re like, you know, get your basic 10, 11 rebounds, but then he has all these assists. So it was like he's actually playing within the offense. Yeah. And everybody, like, they're making shots, obviously, thunder or not. Yeah. But it's still, he made, he's knowing, he's making the right plays. Yeah. That's the only knock I have against Harden is he's not always making the right play for Plus the team. Yeah. yeah. Keep getting mixed up. No but they're, they're, he's, he's making it worse for the team yep. by just trying to just force everything else. Like, if I'm not getting this shot, then, all right, five seconds left. I guess he's open. Let me – no, I'll just jack it up. Yeah, and uh -huh. I think you I, you are definitely onto something there because when James Harden is in the flow of the game and he's they're running that system, they're doing it flawlessly, they're executing. Like, they're, they're usually winning games like 120 to like 90. Mm -hmm. Like, it's a blowout, like, offensive displays, you know. <laughs> When Russell Westbrook kind of gets in his groove and he's running his game. It's all him. It's all him. And they're winning games usually it's like 95 to 86 or something like that. And you know it, almost, I mean? it almost may be like that's the mentality of the players where maybe he's playing with the wrong guys. Yeah. Well, they, well, they, pro <clears throat> they probably are because he has no faith in his teammates or he's just that ego driven or he thinks he. Are they is. scared of him? Like, well, maybe I should take this shot or <laughs> the coach is like, no, this is like. He needs maybe some more ball dominant guys to play along yeah. with him. Like at least with, even though Durant was back, they were back and forth with shots and stuff. Yeah. But at least like he know, he know if he has the ball, he doesn't have to pass it to Westbrook. They still have two killers on that team. Yeah, who are not afraid to shoot the ball. <clears throat> yeah, like the I always heard his name, the uh, Australian guy on the team, like Adams. Adams. Yeah, yeah. And the in what in last year he was dominant he was until great. he got kicked through nuts. But <laughs> <laughs> he was a dominant player. <laughs> And when you gave him the ball, he produced. They couldn't stop him in the post. Yeah, he was. He he looked like that. He was breaking out of his shell. Yeah, those, so I th I thought for sure at least him. And, you could do easy pick and rolls with him and Westbrook. No, nope. mm -hmm. he, he his points are all rebounds. And then he still he should. Why doesn't he average at least ten and twelve? Exactly. Okay, so I know you think James Harden should win. Who do you think will win? The probably Westbrook. Okay, that's where I I would I'll say this though. How the finals. Well, the conference, well, the playoffs in general ended. I would say this. This is my my gut feeling is Westbrook, Kawhi, Harden. Because Harden had just an awful game six. Kawhi is going to get the bonus of they're going to feel sorry for the Spurs. Because he, how he, they could have won that series. Yeah. I, I honestly think they could have, but that's whatever. They, how they played in the finals in game one with him on the court. 
And then you look at well, what they did happened? beat they did beat the Rockets without him in Game Six. They mm-hmm. destroyed him. It was crazy. And then, but you so you have a knock down. against you have a knock against Harden. And he was like, well, and that's a plus. You don't quiet. You right. And he was like, well, we didn't really need him against him. But think of how bad the Rockets were at mm-hmm. that point. And then look at him against the Warriors. It reminded me of Game One at the start of the season when they played the yeah. uh, Warriors. They killed him in Golden State. Same thing they were doing in, in Game One of the playoffs and Conference Finals. Kill him in Golden State. Yeah, Kawhi's. He should be at least top three best player in the world in by uh, however you want to look at it. Yeah, yeah. I know. I totally mm-hmm. agree with you, and I think uh, that's interesting you said that because I do think in some way the playoffs actually do play into the voting. I don't mm-hmm. think they they're say not that. supposed to. It's but not supposed to, but like it comes. You need to get the up, voting out of the way then. Uh, yeah, just do it <laughs> when the season's over. I don't want to see all these like awards start leaking out as the playoffs yeah. go. It's annoying, but uh, it. I, I think I think you might be right. Um, I You're gonna close out game, get an MVP award. Hey, I'm about <laughs> to get swept, but I'm still getting this MVP award. That's cool. <laughs> yeah, uh, but it, I think but it's funny because we say that, but Russell Westbrook, Westbrook probably will win the award, and he was eliminated the soonest. Then mm-hmm. he was knocked out by Harden's team. So yeah. I don't know, but I, I definitely think it's going to be Westbrook. Um, it's just I that's me again voting along the lines of how the NBA does it. It's not necessarily how I see how the MVP should be, but I think he's... If you had to pick, like, just on your, like, how you saw the season, would he still be your MVP regardless? The way, if it, if it was me picking based on, like, what I see as being the most valuable, I would mm-hmm. pick Kawhi Leonard. This okay. Season. I, I think you always that. have to put LeBron James in the discussion, but... Mm-hmm. It, it was surprising. It was, and what the thing was, I think, why he got knocked this year is because they did, they all had great seasons, breakout seasons, quote-unquote, but then his team success as well. Look at it. The top three teams in the NBA were the Golden State Warriors, the San Antonio Spurs, the Rockets. All three of those teams had better records than them. Then you put the uh, the fourth best team in the league, quote unquote, record wise, with the Celtics. Yep. He had the fifth, probably the fifth best, fifth or sixth best record in the league as a yep. team. Are you, are you who, who are you talking about? The Cavs. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, they didn't yeah. even have the top three best. They had the fifth best record. That team struggled down the yeah. line though. Like they were fifty. They were um, forty-one and I think they're they're tw- they had 20, 20, 21 and twenty-one or twenty-two yeah. and twenty-two. Some of those. They were five hundred teams for the last forty-four games of the season. Um, but that's also you can attribute a lot of that to him sitting out just the, either random games or quarters mm-hmm. of games. You know, like they just the way they work that schedule is kind of weird. He still played a lot of minutes, though. Which yeah, is he led the league in minutes again. Yeah, but, but you're right. That it, it, That's the first time we've really seen that team kind of fall into, like, the sub-top five, top five team. Yeah. So, I don't know. That that probably would play into him definitely not being a top three candidate, which he isn't. And then, but then, I mean, they're not going to look how average they were when he didn't play because I believe they only won one game this year when he didn't play. I didn't like the eight that he missed. It's like, well, is that really on LeBron or is that more on the team that's around him? Like, you well, other players, you got all sorts that don't want to step up. It's usually it wasn't just LeBron saying. It was also Kevin Love was out with True. his injuries, so like you, it was Kyrie running the whole show, and he said a lot too. So I don't know. But yeah, uh, I think that was a pretty good talk on the yep. uh, top three MVP conversation. Um, I think we agree. Probably overall, we're going to say Westbrook is our MVP. Probably that's my pick is West, yeah. Russell Westbrook. I still go Harden, but probably Westbrook. All right, thanks guys. Yeah. Enjoy it. Make sure to follow, like, and subscribe to BirdFeed PC. All our pages on SoundCloud, Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube are all BirdFeed PC, all lowercase, all one word.